Yo, what is going on, everybody? It is your boy, Grip Nerd Sports Cards, back here with another video for you guys today. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about the 2024 Bowman Checklist. That is right. The checklist is out for 2024 Bowman. And honestly, it's pretty interesting. There are some positives and there are some negatives. So we're going to talk all about that in this video because, honestly, I'm not too impressed. Not really, and I'll let you know why. So before we get into that, thank you so much for joining me on this video today. Can we get 100 likes on this video? That is the like goal for today's video. That is the best way you can help me grow this channel is by hitting that like button to show your support for all the content that we make here on a daily basis. Speaking of growing the channel, we're doing a giveaway. And by the way, Wongzilla, if you're watching this, um, hit me up on Instagram. You still haven't, I don't even know if you even like know you won yet, but you won the giveaway. So if you're watching this, DM me on Instagram. I don't want to pick a new winner. I don't. I want to give him a, obviously a lot of time to answer, but uh, I'll to try to get a hold of him if he doesn't watch this. So Wongzilla, if you're watching this, you won. Either way, um, the new giveaway, we're giving away hobby packs of some product. Don't know what yet. Whatever is close to 9,000, we'll give away. All you got to do is be subscribed, like this video, turn on the post notifications, and comment your all-star, who you think are going to be your all-star representatives on your favorite team in July. And I'll pick the winner once we hit 9,000, which we are actually, like, moving pretty, pretty good. Like, we're already at, like, 1 point, or I should say 8.15, which is, like, insane. Um, literally just hit 8,000, like, last week, so... Yeah, so it's not going to be long, honestly, before we hit 9,000. So pretty excited about that. Like I said, my goal is 10,000 by the end of the uh, end of the year. And it's definitely possible. It's definitely going to happen, I think. So shout out to you guys for making it possible. You guys are awesome. And, of course, this video and channel are sponsored by SeatGeek. So if you're a first-time SeatGeek purchaser, you could use my code GRIP and RIP, all one word, to save $20. That is right. SeatGeek and I have partnered up to give you insane savings to hopefully get you guys at some more baseball games or concerts or, or whatever. You could use the code for literally anything. So anything you could buy a ticket for, you could use my code for. So hockey, basketball, baseball, football, WWE, concerts, anything. So big shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring my channel. Uh, let's get into it. So let's get into it. So man, pretty interesting day today, man. Pretty interesting day Again, went to another Walmart and Target. The one Target had no cards, like, literally at all, but which was, like, insane. Um, the Walmart I went to today had everything and anything heritage imaginable. There was, like, one hanger box, about four or five fat packs left, about three monster boxes, a lot of blasters, didn't count them. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I didn't buy any, um... Of course, as you guys are well aware, I have documented very good the last couple days. Um, there are huge problems with Heritage right now. Like, and I said this yesterday and the other day, and I'll say it again. Check your cards. Because if you have a light like I do, like a lamp, like studio light like I do, because this light you see projecting onto the video is not my, like, ceiling light. Uh, ceiling um, light, it's like a lamp, like a studio light, like a ring light, kind of, um, but look at your cards, you are, I promise you, if you have a good light, or even like get a flashlight, get a flashlight on your phone and look at the cards closely, you are going to see a lot of quality control issues with your cards, and that is not good, like I am, I wanted to buy a monster box of Heritage, I do, I want to get some blues, but then I said to myself, you know what? I could easily just buy those blues on eBay. I, I mean, like literally, I could literally just buy them on eBay for like $5 a piece. Um, so obviously I don't want to spend $50 in hopes to get one rather than, you know, getting one for $5 the one I want and say, you know what? It is what it is, right? So that's that. So let's talk Bowman. Hopefully, I will start out by saying this. Hopefully this year's Bowman isn't ruined by quality control. I mean, we're seeing terrible quality control for Heritage. Just imagine what it's going to be like with Bowman. Bowman comes out May the 8th, not too far from now. 
We're about, I would say, give or take three and a half weeks at this point, three and a half weeks out of uh, for 2024 Bowman. I admittedly, I'm telling you right now how I am buying this set. I am not buying a hobby box. Those things are so freaking expensive. Retail is going to be your best friend with this. Blasters primarily are going to be your best friend. Um, fat packs, if the security tag myth is again true, well, we will figure that out. I'll put that to the test um, so you guys don't have to. Of course, the big security tag myth of Bowman, of course, people claim if there's a security tag in the fat pack that there's something good in there. So, uh, I mean, it is true. I mean, it's worked in the past. Now, there's sometimes it doesn't work. There's sometimes it does. So, it's really hit or miss. But um, either way, let's talk the checklist, right? And like I said in the open, man, I am very, very disappointed, kind of, with this checklist. Now, admittedly, I will admit to you right now, I am doing my research on the prospects because obviously a lot of those guys, I don't know. Now, Walker Jenkins and Dylan Cruz are obviously the number one, number two you're going to want to get. Um, as for, you know, three through 10, because of course we do our top tens, that is what I'm working on right now. I am already looking into my top 10 list because it's going to take a long time to do my research on these guys. So from that point, in that perspective, I have been seeing a lot of people saying that the checklist like is like decent. It's just about the same as last year people were saying it was. I saw on Twitter and Facebook. Um, so take that with what you will. Again, you know, people could just be saying that to say that. I'm going to like actually research it and things like that. But let's talk about the rookie checklist because, you know, Bowman is not just prospects. Now, of course, prospects are the primary focus of Bowman, but there's also a veteran checklist, which is called the base checklist in, in Bowman. And in that checklist is where all your rookie cards are going to be found, right? And by the way, speaking of rookie cards, when I do my top 10, do you want me to do a rookie card edition? Because I will. I mean, I don't typically like to do that for Bowman, but in the comment section, leave it down below. Do you want me to do a prospect edition? Of course, it comes out first, obviously. That'll come out on that Wednesday. And then the Thursday, the day after, we could do a rookie edition. How about that? So let me know in the comments. I'll, I might think about doing that. It's a good idea. I might do it. But either way. The rookie checklist, mm, man, not impressed, not impressed at all with the rookie card checklist. Why do I say that? Because every rookie that is supposed to be in series two, like the big names, not named Yamamoto, Yamamoto is going to be in there. They are not there. Now, every rookie card from series one is in there for the most part now i did see a couple of my pirates are not in there but all the big name rookie cards in series one are going to be in there so i advise if you have a favorite player on your favorite team who has a rookie card i highly advise you go look at the checklist because the base veteran checklist is only 100 cards it's 100 cards and that is it. I think the prospect checklist is 150 or 200. Um, so obviously, like I said, they want to obviously, you know, pay more attention to the, to the prospects, obviously, with this set. Um, but either way, what I was trying to say here is, you know, there's a lot of rookie cards um, that, like, for example, Jared Triolo are not in Bowman, like for my Pirates. So I would advise you go look at the checklist for yourself. But I imagine if your rookie or if your team has one rookie, I imagine they'd probably be in there. Um, so keep that in mind. Like, I didn't see Christian Encarnacion Strand for the Reds. I didn't see his name. I didn't. Now, I maybe have to do another, like, take and look. But I really wasn't looking for his name. Um, but I didn't see his name. But uh, that's just one example. Uh, but let's talk prospect Or uh, not prospects. Um, rookies. Right. So, Young Holy. Not in the product. Yeriel Rodriguez. Not in the product. Shota Iminaga. Not in the product. Here's the thing. 
Yamamoto's in the product, but those guys are not. It's funny because those guys I just mentioned, I'm pretty sure all signed onto teams before Yamamoto. So the question I got here is, if Tops can give Yamamoto the special treatment, why can't they give those other guys special treatment? I know this product is not for rookie cards. I get it. But you would think that Tops would, wanna, would want to pump these guys out very quickly. You would think that they would want to do that, correct? Because a Giants fan may be like, oh my god, like if Yamamoto is in the checklist, that means Young Ho Lee for my Giants is going to be in the checklist. Well, that's wrong. That's not the case at all. Which sucks. It really does suck. Because Bowman, obviously, is going to be good. I mean, every year's Bowman always flies off the shelf. I just wish with the inclusion of a couple other rookies, that would have happened. Now, for anyone wondering if Jackson Holiday is in the checklist, not as a rookie card. He might be in there as a prospect. Probably guaranteed, actually. I can promise you he probably is. But as a rookie card, you're going to have to wait. My guess is update. That's my guess. Uh, I think Series 2 is already set in stone. Um, oh yeah, keep in mind as well, I forgot to mention this as well, other rookie cards, um, like Wyatt Langford, he's not in the product, Jackson Chirio, not in the product, and um, who's the other one I'm missing? Uh, Jackson Merrill. All three of those rookie cards as well, who were called up on opening day, are also not in the product. So that actually leaves a good discussion. We might save this discussion for another day because this literally was a light bulb moment in my head right now as I was thinking about it. Is Tops going to save those guys for update? That's a great question. That is a very good question because there could be some truth to that. Because like I said with Yamamoto, Yamamoto has a rookie card in this checklist, right? But at the same time, those other three international signings I mentioned have no cards yet. And Yamamoto is also in big league as well. The international signings were not. Tops had ample time to put them in there, but they did not. So that's a great question. We might have to actually dissect that question piece by piece in a different video. Are they saving those rookie cards for update? Now, I expect the international signings to be in Series 2. But Merrill, Chirio, Lankford, are they not going to be in Series 2? Man, if that actually is the case, I hope that's not the case. But I just thought about it right now in my head. If that's actually going to happen, wow, is that bad. But... I'll give Topps benefit of the doubt. Series 2 is still about, I would say, give or take about 60 days away still. We're about two months away from Series 2. There is ample, ample time to put those guys in Series 2. So hopefully Topps does the right thing and puts them in Series 2. Now, like I said, for Jackson Holiday and Paul Skeens, who's getting called up apparently within the next couple of weeks, you are probably looking at updates, at least for Holiday. Holiday is confirmed. He has a rookie card, Tops now, so that is confirmed. He is going to be in the 2024 product. Now, for Paul Skeens, that's just, I guess, depends on when he gets called up. But my honest personal opinion, just, you know, off topic here. I know we kind of, you know, went off topic with this last couple minutes. But speaking of Paul Skeens, you know, it depends on when he's getting called up. Rumor has he's getting called up. First week of May. That is the going rumor right now in all of his projections with how he's pitched and how many innings and pitch count he's gone through in AAA so far. It kind of looks that way. He's already amped up to 55 pitches. So I think once he gets to 75-ish, that's when they're going to get him up here. I think that is realistically what you're looking at. So it's only a matter of time, really. But either way, um, to wrap this video up to go back to the Bowman checklist, Bowman should still be good, right? 
I'm going to have to do my research. Obviously, um, Walker Jenkins and Dylan Cruz are number one and number two, obviously, no doubt about it. So those are going to be your top guys to chase in this set. Now, as for anybody else, I have to do my research on, so that way I understand who I'm talking about when the time comes to make my top 10 most valuable video, so that way people are informed as well, and that way, you know, you get the information that you need. But by the way, if you guys know who is going to be quote-unquote good, help me out in the comments. I would love to hear you guys help me out with this, because, you know, this really takes a community to make th these lists for the for the prospects, at least. I ain't no prospect guru, believe me. Now, I know the top guys, but after you get down to, like, you know, 3 through 10, that's where it gets difficult. But either way, I have a long time to figure that out, so I have about three, three or so weeks. Either way, I'm getting out of here. But before I do leave, of course, we are going to open a pack of... We're going to open a pack of uh, Heritage. And yes, we are going to check card by card for damage control. <laughs> this is like one of my favorite things to do now, admittedly. So let's see. All right, here we go. We have a whole bunch of cards. We have one backwards. Is, there, is it a parallel? It must be something. I don't know. It must be something. We'll see. So Ryan Mountcastle, let's see. Splittage right here. Dent right here. Indent right here. All right, first card's damaged. Oh, wait, and another dot indent right here on the top corner. All right, there's one card damaged. There you go, Tops. Good going. Let's see. Nico Horner. Splittage right here again. What is with the splittage? Seriously, what is with the splittage of these cards? Now, I don't see any indents. Oh, never mind. Take that back. There's one right there. Unbelievable. There, you kind of see it with my light. It's right there. Unbelievable. Like, actually. Crying Paris? I think I, I probably butchered his name. Oh, big print line right here. Oh, dent right here. Look, see that, where my, see that light? See where it uh, reflects off the light right there? There's a dent right there. Unbelievable. There is a print line. Maybe my camera could pick it up. You see that where, right where the light is? You see that little line? It goes from there to there. Unbelievable. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, look at this. Look at this. Another indent. Look at that. No, my camera can see. That's a big one. My camera picks that one up. Look at that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's like an X. You can see it right here. It's like an X. Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, oh my God. Andy Rodriguez. All right, please not, please not be damaged. Please do not, please don't be damaged. Let's see. Oh my goodness, this one might be the worst one yet. There are two lines, actually three. Again, an X right here, and then it's right here. Oh, and then and then splittage right here. Oh my god, bro. Tops. This is this is bad. I mean. We're three for three, or four for four. I don't know. Every single card we've pulled had damage to it so far. Junior Caminero, one of the top guys in my checklist. I think number two, actually, as a matter of fact. This one, um, honestly, this one looks good. This one, I off first glance, looks good. I might be missing something, but I'm not going to really, you know, Slade. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, so I'm not even going to try. Let's see. Indent right here. <laughs> Holy man. Huh. <laughs> I saw an indent right off the rip. Right right there. Big dot. I don't know if my camera will pick that one up or not. It's a small one, but it's there. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Another dent right there. Backwards card of David Bendar. Huh. Okay. I don't know why it's backwards. But it's a pirate. Oh, it might be a short print. I think cards 1 through 100 are short prints. So, yeah, that might be a short print right there, actually. All right, let's see David Bendar. This one looks okay, surprisingly. Oh, nope, take that back. Dot right there. Right in the corner there. Dot right there. Unbelievable. Cool, but unbelievable. 
And we have a cool card right here. Look at this. 2016 Most Valuable Player from 2016 Tops. So it looks like they put, I guess, pictures of 2016 Tops on, like, or I guess, cards. I, I, I actually pulled, spoiler alert for my channel members, I pulled three different cards like this with different, like, years of Tops on it. So I guess they're doing that. But let's see here. Let's inspect the card. Um... This one looks decent, I, I think looks okay. So we'll put that to the side as well. So huh, as you guys can clearly tell, clearly, <laughs> we have had multiple damaged cards in multiple packs. When will it end? That's the question. When will this end? I do not know. I could not tell you. It's ridiculous. But either way, before I start screaming, because this stuff just ticks me off, I'm getting out of here. So let me know what you think about the Bowman checklist, and I'll see you guys in the next video.